thank you chair persons let me first thank bansi for organizing this wonderful meeting successively for this 11th year so he has given me the task of speaking on inspiring a novel anti diabetic age and this is the word i heard first time when he told me to speak on this subject and there is only one abstract available to this molecule as far as ads 2024 is concerned so let me first uh tell you the background how this thing was developed or uh, this idea came to the people that this thing can be done for the good glucose control so we there was data to say that the adenovirus 36 in animal models it increases adiposity but at the same time it improves glycemic control and reduces hepatic lipid accumulation despite high fat diet and without reducing the proximal insulin signaling so this appears to enhance systemic glucose control by promoting glucose uptake at the adipose tissue as well as skeletal muscle and at the same time it also reduces the hepatic steatosis and hepatic glucose output so both these things together they provide good glucose control when the person is infected with this adenovirus 36 so in monkeys natural exposure to this virus was linked with a reduction in fasting plasma glucose levels in humans also it was associated with obesity and fat gain yet the glucose control was good and the lipids were better so this gives you a clue that natural adenovirus 36 infection it can give you a glycemic control without any impact on the insulin sensitivity but we cannot use this virus because it is an infectious agent for the therapeutic benefit of providing glucose control so what they have done they have done variety of studies to identify the molecule which provides that glucose control with that virus infection and then they have come to this e4 or f1 protein that was the thing through which the adenovirus was improving glucose control and in vivo experiments they identified that this protein which is a 125 amino acid peptide it increases cellular glucose uptake in pre adipocytes adipocytes myeloblasts and reduces glucose output from the hepatocytes so they were able to identify the molecule which was responsible for having a good glucose control when either animal or humans they were infected with adenovirus 36 so this is the first paper which this group by nikhil durandar and vijay hegde and their team they have done lot of experiment on this molecule and this is the first paper they published in 2016 that an adenovirus derived protein it is a novel candidate for anti diabetic drug development they have taken mice they have fed them high fat diet and then they were injected with a retrovirus plasmid expressing either this protein or a null vector and then they have carried out variety of studies to find out what was the impact on glucose insulin islet size glucagon then they have also tried to find out variety of proteins whether they were expressed in higher amounts or they were expressed in lower amounts so what they the result showed that this mice those who were injected with e4 or f1 they had significantly and reproducibly improved glycemic excursion when they were loaded with a glucose despite a high fat diet it improved glucose clearance without increasing insulin sensitivity production or secretion so there was no impact it was an insulin independent mechanism there was no impact on insulin sensitivity insulin release or insulin production and it modulated molecular signaling in mice tissue which included greater protein abundance of adiponectin pakt and glut4 so they concluded that this is the proof of concept that this can be used as a potential anti diabetic agent and they have tried more and more experiments with this molecule with this protein to identify how it works how it provides glucose control how it acts on the insulin levels and further studies in liver in kidney even aging as well as cognitive decline so we all know that 
generally in obesity or type 2 diabetes, the proximal insulin signaling is often impaired. Yet the many of drugs which we are using, like insulin secretogogues or sensitizers, they focus on reducing the proximal insulin signaling for enhancing cellular glucose uptake. If this is impaired and we are using these molecules, then they are not going to act the way they have to act. So if we can develop an agent which can pass this proximal insulin signaling and can act on the distal insulin signaling, then it will be having much more beneficial effect as far as glucose control is concerned. So that is why this molecule, it works independent of proximal insulin signaling. These are animal studies, high fat fed mice were injected with again a retrovirus plasmid expressing this molecule or a null vector. It significantly improved insulin sensitivity in response to a glucose load, yet their proximal insulin signaling in fat depots was impaired, but still they were able to improve glucose uptake. So they concluded that it works independent of proximal insulin signaling. So that is the beauty of this protein and that's why a lot of research is going on by this group and probably in near future they will now be starting clinical trials. So how it improves glucose uptake? It increases glucose uptake in adipocytes, skeletal muscle cells independent of insulin via E4 ORF protein that is AD36 uh, it does and this protein how it does? It works through the distal insulin signaling pathways. Another important uh, aspect of this protein, it reduces the need for endogenous insulin. It reduces glucose, that's why the hyperinsulinemia goes down, the need for insulin secretion goes down, hyperinsulinemia goes down and the insulin levels they also decrease. These are the mice experiments which support the working hypothesis that this protein mediated lowering of insulin response is not due to increased sensitivity to insulin or reduce ability to produce or release insulin but it is likely to be due to a, a reduced requirement for insulin release because of reduction in glucose level hyperinsulinemia goes down the need for insulin goes down and so the circulating insulin levels goes down and therefore it is having a insulin sparing action and I think in obesity, the first thing to happen is insulin resistance, hyperinsulinemia, which sets up the cascade of all events which contribute to the cardiometabolic syndrome or cardiometabolic risk factors. So if we can reduce insulin levels, then that is going to give a better outcomes. And this is the molecule which can have a insulin sparing action, can reduce insulin levels and can provide benefits. Like SGLT2 inhibitors, which we are using, can decrease glucose levels can decrease the need for insulin release from the pancreas and can have an insulin sparing action. Same way, this protein is also having an sp insulin sparing action. So this is another paper where they have tried to find out whether it has got any impact on the kidney because renal lipid accumulation is also a risk factor for the development of chronic kidney disease and in obesity there is increased lipid accumulation in the kidneys and this is the animal study again which showed that it can decrease renal lipid accumulation in high fat fed mice. So that way it can also provide protection against the renal injury which occurs in obesity and can prevent the development of chronic kidney disease. There is an upcoming interest to find out whether it has got any impact on aging process. So this is again my study by the same group which was done and it says that in high fat fed older mice this protein significantly improves glycemic control, it reduces hepatic steatosis and fibrosis and also reduces the aging related hepatic markers of mitochondrial integrity and telomere attrition. So it may have some impact on the mitochondrial dysfunction and the aging changes which occur in the mitochondria and DNA and other things. This is another mouse model where it has shown that it can provide it can impact the cognitive function also and then it can be a basis for development of molecules to target Alzheimer's disease also. So all this data they suggest that that AD36E4ORF1 
can be developed as a novel anti-diabetic agent in a model of diet induced hyperglycemia. Considerable research is needed to exploit its therapeutic property. Determination of the role in preventing and treating diabetic in genetic models of obesity and diabetes and in models of type 1 diabetes. Very careful evaluation is required because they generally work through what they do. They work through distal insulin signaling. They activate RAS and rather than going through the proximal pathway here they activate this directly and then the entire cascade of events takes place and glucose uptake is improved inside the adipocytes, muscle cells and various tissues. But this RAS activation is also associated with oncogenesis. So you have to keep in mind, although the mice experiments have not shown that this is associated with any kind of development of tumors, but human studies will definitely require that angle to be kept in mind. And important point is how we can deliver either this protein or this protein mimetic agents in human studies. That is what the uh, requirement of the our was. So the company or the group who are working behind this molecule or this protein, they have developed a nanoparticle based drug delivery system to administer this protein currently in the animal studies and probably now they will start the clinical trials. So we all know that nanoparticles can be used as a drug delivery system. They are made of various materials such as natural or synthetic polymers, lipids or metals and they are more, more efficiently taken up by the cells than the larger molecules and they are a very good material for a drug delivery system. This is the way you can give, this is the drug. You can combine it with a nanoparticle, then you can deliver it to the uh, tissue and the target tissue, there is a receptor where the drug will go and will attach with the receptor and will go inside the cell. So this is the way nanoparticles can be used for drug delivery system. And this group who were working on this molecule, they have received huge grant for this animal studies and they have come out with this abstract at ADA 2024 and probably because of this only the Bansi has chosen this as a topic for this conference that inspire in a novel anti-diabetic agents. So they have given this protein name that is Insparin. So Insparin is E4ORF gene related protein or its uh, uh, main outcome of that protein and that they have studied in variety of animal models to find out how they work, what is the molecular pathway underlying the glycemic effect of insparin, transgenic, uh, uh, transgenic or vector mediated delivery in various animal models of hyperglycemia to test efficacy of glycemic improvement and safety and third the FDA approved drugs that are delivered via nanoparticles for that they have also used it in animal models and they concluded that this is the molecule which upregulates glucose uptake in fat cells and skeletal muscle cells in insulin independent manner, reduces glucose release by hepatocytes. Mainly, they bind with this new molecule that is dorsophilia disc large protein that is DLG1. This is a new target now. It activates RAS and in turn it upregulates the PI3K related pathway and thereby it improves the glucose uptake at variety of cells. Also, the high fat fed mice which are expressing insparin ad adipose tissue or receiving viral vector mediated insparin, they show lower endogenous insulin secretion and yet faster clearance of glucose load from the blood and reduce fat accumulation in the liver. So this is a novel way of working and nanoparticle mediated delivery of insparin in animal models it improves glucose tolerance clearance and reduces HbA1c level in this high fat fed mice. So animal model is there to support that this is a molecule which can provide glucose control independent of insulin with insulin sparing action working through distal insulin signaling pathway improving uptake at all three sites reducing hepatic fat accumulation also and at the same time reducing hyperinsulinemia and requirement of insulin. So probably early diabetes or patients who are obese at risk of diabetes, they are going to benefit much more for this molecule. So this was in whole about Inspirin.
new class of anti-diabetic agent. Thank you. I have kept this that do not ask any 